we're going to get more into Lewis symbols in the next unit in chapter two. But for now, I just want to tell you that um, the outer, the electrons in atoms are arranged in what we call shells. Um, you know, different atoms have different numbers of electrons depending on the number of protons. And those electrons themselves are arranged in kind of shells. And um, sort of like an onion, layers of an onion. And the outer layer of electrons on an atom is called the valence shell or the valence electrons. All right. And there was this um, symbolic way of representing the electrons that are in the valence shell that, that somebody who was a professor out in California, his name was Gian Lewis, came up with a long time ago. Um, where you just arrange dots around the symbol of the element to indicate the number of electrons that are in what we call the valence shell. And so one dot indicates one electron in, in, in what they call an orbital, two dots, two electrons. So hydrogen just has one valence electron, so we would make its, its Lewis um, symbol like that. Helium has two, doesn't matter which side you put it on, I have more space over here, I'll put it there. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. How do I know how many valence electrons are in these elements? Well, as it turns out, the periodic table is a guide. And again, we're going to come back to this uh, electron configuration in the next unit. But for now, to really understand ionic compounds, you need to know one simple thing. And that is that group 1 elements have one valence electron. Group 2 have two valence electrons. Group 3A have three, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to group eight have eight valence electrons. All right, and what happens is um, the metals in group one, two, and three tend to lose their valence electrons to form ions. So if group one loses one electron, it's going to form an ion with a plus one charge, like the example we saw with sodium. Group two metals are going to form ions with a plus two charge because they're going to lose their two valence electrons. And group three metals are going to lose three electrons. All right. The nonmetals in groups five, six, and seven tend to, um, to gain electrons. All right. And so how many electrons do they gain? Well, as it turns out, this group out here are the noble gases. Noble gases have, except for helium, have eight valence electrons. So it turns out eight is a very stable uh, number of valence electrons. So the nonmetals tend to gain electrons such that they'll end up with eight. So if you have seven already, you only need to gain one electron. So the example we saw, chlorine tends to gain one electron. It would have a minus one charge when it gains one. The group six are going to gain two, so they're going to have a minus two charge. So these will form ions with a minus one charge. Group six minus two charge, group five minus three charge. Again, I'm telling you this just so you can understand a little bit better the formation of ionic compounds. We'll come back to the details of how the electrons are arranged in the next unit. All right, so to be quick about it, um, you can tell the Lewis structure, you can predict the Lewis structure by finding where on the periodic table the element is, and then you can say what the valence electrons are based on the group that it's in, and you can draw a little symbol. So oxygen is in group six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it has six valence electrons. Um, sodium is in group one, it has one. Chlorine is in group seven, so it has seven. Potassium is in group one, it has one. Magnesium is in group two, it has two. Okay? So you can use uh, Lewis symbols to work out the formulas of ionic compounds. And that is on one of your worksheets that you can do um, in your class. Um, there's lots of worksheets to go with this particular um, activity. So I don't want to take a lot of my time because I have limited time to go through this part one of video uh, nine. I just want to tell you one more thing. For transition elements, they have vari variable valence. Um, so in order to indicate the type of charge on those particular elements and those particular compounds, you have to use Roman numerals. And you will see examples of that as we move along. Okay, let's see, where are we? Okay, so on this periodic table, oh, I know what I was going to say. There's nothing on this periodic table, but this is a good, it's just the shape of a periodic table. Um, to uh, recognize that these are the noble gases, they have eight valence electrons, all right? So they're not going to tend to form uh, cations, anions, or bonds at all. Um, 
some of the, the other thing I wanted to tell you is there are two transition metals. Silver is found right here and zinc is found right here that do not have variable valence. We can predict the type of ions they're going to form and these you just have to memorize that silver tends to form an ion with a plus one charge, zinc tends to form an ion with a plus two charge. Okay? All the other um, metals from group ones, two, and three you can predict. The rest of the transition uh, metals we'll have to use a Roman numeral to decide. And as you work through your worksheets this will become more clear. Okay. Okay. Let's see. All right, one more thing here. All right, so when we name our ionic compounds, um, we name the metal using the metal name. We, use, we name the nonmetal using the nonmetal elemental name plus the IDE suffix. And then also, we do have some ionic compounds that are formed with what we call polyatomic many atom um, molecules that have a charge. So they're polyatomic ions. All right, um, and these are some more common polyatomic ions that you should be familiar with. All right, and what's listed is the chemical formula, the charge, and the name. For example, nitrate, NO3, the nitrogen is chemically combined to the three oxygens, and the whole cluster, the whole group of atoms carries a minus one charge. You just have to remember the name. I'll give you a hint, though. The polyatomic ions oftentimes end in ITE or ATE for the endings. Um, normally, the IDE ending is associated with an element like chloride, fluoride, bromide, whereas bromate is a polyatomic um, anion. It's, you don't, it's kind of obscure, so you don't have to remember it, but, but chlorate, for example, um, is a polyatomic that's more common. Um, but anyway, so the IDE normally is going to indicate that it's just a single uh, elemental anion, like nitride, as opposed to nitrate or nitrite. There are a couple exceptions. Cyanide, hydroxide, and peroxide all also have an IDE ending. So you'll just want to kind of, you know, kind of get this organized in your brain, because um, a very common mistake is people will confuse, like, for example, the nitride ion with the nitrite ion. 